Nigel Farage mocked Prince Harry for painting himself to be a poverty czar at the United Nations General Assembly. Prince Harry condemned a global assault on democracy and freedom around the world in a keynote address to the United Nations General Assembly in New York on Monday, criticizing the rolling back of constitutional rights in the United States. He took aim at the overruling of Roe v. Wade, a landmark decision by the Supreme Court that guaranteed women the right to abortion at the federal level. He also cited lies and disinformation, the horrific war in Ukraine, and the havoc of climate change to make his case in his speech delivered to an almost empty room. Speaking to GB News viewers, Nigel Farage slammed Prince Harry, saying, Prince Harry has been to the United Nations today. Goodness only knows why they invite him. But he's been speaking. He's been laying in into the decisions of the Supreme Court in the USA to make abortion rights, as they decided, at the state level and by voters as opposed to it being part of federal law. And he's also talked about the attack on democracy in the world, which I think he and his wife mean, any candidate in support is anti-democratic. But just to cap the lot to an empty room of the UN and I'm pleased to say Prince Harry has been talking about poverty in Africa, a man who's never had to do a day's work in his life, who travels around the world in a private jet who's got a big advance on Netflix. And he's now czar of poverty in Africa. Isn't that just marvelous? Mr. Farage said. During the UN's Nelson Mandela Day commemoration in New York, Prince Harry honored the memory of the former South African president and anti-apartheid activist. He said, on my wall, and in my heart, every day is an image of my mother and Mandela meeting in Cape Town in 1997. Princess Diana and Nelson Mandela met in Cape Town just months before the Duchess of Cornwall died in a car crash in 1997. When I first looked at the photo, straight away what jumped out was the joy on my mother's face, said Prince Harry. The playfulness, cheekiness, even. Pure delight to be in communion with another soul so committed to serving humanity. Princess Diana was known for her humanitarian work. During her lifetime, she helped homeless organizations and the National AIDS Trust. Prince Harry has criticized the rolling back of constitutional rights in the United States in a keynote address to the United Nations General Assembly in New York on Monday. The Duke of Sussex, 37, was watched by wife Meghan Markle as he made a thinly veiled critique of the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to end abortion rights during a speech marking Nelson Mandela International Day. The few weaponizing lies and disinformation at the expense of the many, Harry said. And from the horrific war in Ukraine to the rolling back of constitutional rights here in the United States. We are witnessing a global assault on democracy and freedom, the cause of Mandela's life. Prince Harry told the assembly the world had come to know Mr. Mandela through photographs of a man who, even when confronting unimaginable cruelty and injustice, almost always had a smile on his face. He then spoke of a cherished photograph of his mother Princess Diana taken with Mr. Mandela in March 1997, five months before her death. On my wall, and in my heart every day is an image of my mother and Mandela meeting in Cape Town in 1997, Prince Harry said. Prince Harry said the photo was given to him by the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who he and Meghan met during a 2019 trip to South Africa. He said his mother's joy and playfulness were on full display in the photo. Prince Harry went on to criticize global leaders for their inaction on climate change legislation. As we sit here today, our world is on fire, again. And these historic weather events are no longer historic. More and more. They are part of our daily lives, and this crisis will only grow worse, unless our leaders lead. He said daring, transformative decisions were needed to save humanity. These decisions may invite resistance from powerful interests. But the right thing to do is not up for debate. And neither is the science, he said. The only question is if we will be brave enough and wise enough to do what is necessary. Multiple converging crises, from the war in Ukraine to inflation and climate catastrophes, had given way to an endless string of injustices. He said it would be easy to become overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge, succumb to anger or yield to despair. Or we can do what Mandela did, every single day inside that nine-foot prison cell on Robben Island, and every day outside of it too. We can find meaning and purpose in the struggle, too.
Thank you.